even as they hung him on the cross, Luke 23 and verse 34, even as they were driving the nails in his hands, that precious one by the name of Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. He came out saying, I'm going to love like I've never been hurt. And you know, the truth of it is, I've hurt Jesus. We've hurt Jesus. It was our sin, our, our failings that put Jesus Christ on the cross. But how many of you know He loved us like we never hurt Him? Come on. He deserves a second hand today. Come on. Give Him praise in the house today. Today, if you've been hurt, it's time to come to Jesus. You say, well, what do I do? You simply come and you tell him about it and you ask him to heal the pain. Simply come into his presence. And I want to declare that his presence is so lovely. It soothes away the pain. If you want to love like you've never been hurt, you've got to get healed. And I'm telling you, that's the only way to live. Amen. It's not that you will forget what happened. But what it is, it is that God will give you grace to be able to overcome what has happened. Amen? Amen. Then you say, well, there, 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 there's probably still going to be some scars. You know, I've got a few little scars on my hand here and there, uh, you know, where I've hurt myself. But you know something? They don't hurt anymore. I can remember what I did, right? But they don't hurt anymore. Come on. How many of you believe that Jesus can heal the broken heart? Would you give him praise today? And then thirdly this morning, not only does everybody get hurt, and not only does Jesus heal the brokenhearted, but the Bible repeatedly teaches us this principle. So it must be important, am I right? When the Bible does something over and over again, it's got to be an important principle. And it's all through the Word. I don't know whether Satchel Page was a believer in Jesus. I, he sure did act like it he, when he said those words, right? But this is what Colossians tells us. It says, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. And this is not just taught by giving exhortations in, in, in various scriptures, but it's talked about in the very stories, in the very heart of the Word of God. Think of Joseph, right? You may remember that his, it was his own brothers that sold him into slavery. Slavery of the worst kind. He had been thrown into a pit, then sold off to slave traders. And then when he was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, in whose household he was a slave, he was thrown into prison, forgotten by the very ones who pledged to help him. And I, I love that picture of Joseph, right? And, and, and he's now become the second in command of, of, of Pharaoh's, uh, you know, of, of Egypt. And, and, and they bring before him the brothers, and they're, they're starving, and they're they're asking for help and, and, and there was Joseph come on he had the key to the barn he, he was the one who controlled all of the seed actually maybe even in all of the world of, of, of that time and in, a, in that moment he had the power and he had to make a choice he had to say to himself I can get them back I can use the weight and the authority of the position that I have to exact my revenge upon them but Joseph made a decision he said I'm going Going to love my brothers, the very ones that sold me into slavery. I'm going to love them like they never, ever even hurt me. Joseph, as you know, saved his family. The whole family moved to Egypt. And of course, you can imagine after dad died, they thought, uh oh, we're in trouble now. Uh, Dad's gone. Now Joseph is going to get his revenge. And so they sent messengers you know, to plead. They wouldn't even come. They were so afraid. They sent messengers. They feared for their lives, asking Joseph to forgive them. And, and I love this verse in Genesis chapter 50. Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, wherefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Oh, I'm here today to tell you we could learn something from Joseph. Loving like you've never been hurt means not acting out of revenge. Come on. It means loving and comforting and speaking kindly. Come on. Can we give the Lord a praise today for his word? And then there was Moses, right? Moses 
wanted to set God's people free, but he failed. At least the first time he tried. He was called and created for that very purpose. You remember the story. An Egyptian had risen up. The Israelites were were slaves in Egypt. And this Egyptian was mistreating one of the Israelites. And Joseph stepped in to stop him and wound up killing the Egyptian. And then the next day, you know, instead of being respected for that or even being thanked for saving the beat, this guy from getting beat. No, they said, you know, know, they they, they criticized him. They talked about him. And he felt respected from, uh, disrespected from all of that. And so what did Moses do? He distanced himself. He literally ran. In fact, he cut himself off from everybody who would hurt him. For four decades out on the backside of the desert, he, he was remembering how he had been treated. And then God comes to him in a burning bush. You remember the story. And the Lord says to him, go back and save those same people and set my people free. I don't know exactly all that was said in that conversation, but if I'd have been Moses, I'd have said, you know, I pet that dog and he bit me. I, I don't want to go back there. Hello? But God said, go back and love like you've never been hurt. So he went back to do his best to set him free. You remember the story how even as he was doing that, all of a sudden Pharaoh made it harder on the slaves and they had to get their own straw. And all of a sudden everybody was up in arms and angry at Moses. But this time he didn't run. He said, I'm going to love like I've never been hurt. He stayed on and finally God delivered them out of Egypt. But even then, these men and women who were once slaves are now free out there to free on their way to a land that God had promised having seen the power of Jehovah God having seen the provision of God and yet what do they do they begin to moan and groan and complain until the point where God says get out of the way Moses that's it I'm going to take care of these people and what did Moses do he got down in front of him and he said oh God no please just save my people save my people he interceded for them and God saved his people I'm here today to tell you that sometimes the best thing you can do is get on your knees and pray for those who've despitefully used you. Pray for those who've talked about you. Pray for those who have hurt you deeply. Amen. That is loving like you've never been hurt. And then there was David. Think of all the hurt that was in King David, right? When he had a father who didn't believe in him. When the prophet came to Jesse's house to anoint a new king, they called all the kids in. and Not David. He was left out in the field to tend for the sheep. He wasn't even invited to the party. On the very day that he actually killed Goliath, his brothers were poking fun of him, making fun of him, and laughing at him. He had a wife who put him down and mocked his worship. His father-in-law tried to kill him. Then his sons grew up, and you know the story. You know the Bible. You know the Bible's full of amazing stories. And Amnon, one of his sons, rapes one of his his other daughters named Tamar. And then Absalom, out of vengeance, tra- goes and two years later winds up killing Amnon. And, and come on, I mean, you might think, hey, Pastor Bob, my, my family's pretty messed up. But let me tell you something. This is a pretty messed up family right here. Come on. And, but you know what we see in the heart of David, a man after God's own heart, even though this son had murdered. Amnon, we see David in his his palace and he's crying and he's weeping and he's saying, oh, Absalom, Absalom, my son, I just want my son to come on. Let me tell you something, that's loving like you've never been hurt. God wants for us to have that kind of a spirit, that kind of a heart and we've got to tell ourselves, I'm never going to be bitter. I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to be angry. I don't care what you do to me. I'm going to love you because you're part of my family. You're part of my blood. You're my kinfolk. It doesn't matter how hurt I am. I have determined in my soul I will love you. Mm. Then there's the prodigal son's father. Oh man. That's so beautiful. Prodigal just went and wasted all his dad's money. Spending it in riotous living out there in the world and Wasted all of it. Now he comes back. He smells bad. He, he's dirty. He's walking down the road. Oh, I love this story. Because it said the father looked down the road and he saw his son coming. He wasn't a dad that said, okay. You got some things to pay for. No, 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 no. No, no, that dad ran. 
he ran down the road. He threw his arms around his son. And he said this, my son who was lost has now been found. My son who was dead, he, 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 he's, he's still alive. And he told his servants, go get a robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, put shoes on his feet. He's my son and he belongs to me. I'm telling you sometimes, church, that's what needs to happen in families all across America. Dads need to put their arms around their sons who've made a mistake. Moms need to put their arms around daughters who've gone astray and put their arms around them and say you know something you'll always be my daughter you'll always be my son because I love you so much we've got to love like we've never been hurt and then I think of Job I mean you know it's one thing when you got a prodigal son or daughter that hurts your spirit and hurts you by their behavior but what do you do when you have a prodigal God God isn't acting like you think he's supposed to act Job had lost 10 children in one day. Imagine all of his wealth on the same day. He finally lost his health and he's suffering. He had a wife who could only think she could say, Job, why don't you just go ahead and kill yourself, man? And he had four friends. Boy, I'm grateful for my friends. Amen. Well, these friends sat in a circle around him for seven days and did nothing but level accusations at him, called him a hypocrite, called him nothing but a liar, told him that every judgment of God, that, every, uh, that the judgment of God is why he was sick and why he had lost everything that he owned. And in that moment, Job could have become bitter. Job could have become angry. But Job made a decision. He decided, first of all, he was going to trust God. And he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. He give, the Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. And the Bible said that he prayed for those friends. And suddenly, I think when he said that, when he said that I, I'm going to lo love like I've never been hurt. I believe that God saw that. And God said to him, Job, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. Amen. Amen. I'm going to restore to you your life. And I think that's what God is saying to us today. If you let God fight your battle and not go with the natural instinct to want revenge at someone who's hurt you, then God will fight your battles and He'll give you, He'll bless you double if you'll love like you've never been hurt. Amen. God restored all of that to Job. Loving like you've never been hurt means praying for those who've even spoken evil of you as Job did. I guess what I'm trying to say today is that there are so many Christians in homes and families and those families are so hurting today. We just don't seem to know how to love one another. And the sad part of it is that it kind of spills out over in the churches as, as people pick up grudges and people say things like, well, you know, I don't really like her. I don't like him. He, he seems like a fake kind of a person to me. You know, I, I don't really care, you know, for, for, for who they are. And, and they pull back and they pull away. Let me tell you something. What happened to the love? How many of you believe that the world, that the scripture tells us that the world's going to notice that we are his children because we love one another? You know, the, the, the Bible doesn't say they'll know that you're Christians because you've got such power and strength. And